Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do another fun painting. So let's get started. We'll start off today with a one inch brush, and we'll just drop in a nice quick black background. Now, as you can see here, I have two roses sketched in with pencil on the canvas. <laughs> this is going to be very interesting today. We're going to do we're gonna do some flowers for the first time together. I'm gonna to show you this brand new brush that I have. I think you'll like it. So we'll just block in a simple background. The, the background is not the feature of the painting today. It'll really help the roses to stand out, I think. All right, apply this very thinly. I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave the rose area unpainted for now. Next, we'll load up some yellow and black on the one inch brush and maybe right behind these flowers here somewhere. We want a little glow. It's not quite bright enough, so I'll load a little more color. I'm working very carefully, adding little bits of color at a time here, because we don't want to go crazy with this. Yeah, I'll tell you what, we need just a, just a touch of white into that. Okay, that's about all we need. Just to soften up the background a little, really move it around nice. Try not to get into your roses if you can, if you can help it. There we go. Now it's looking better. Don't load up too much. Mm, there we go. And blend it out and let it get darker. We also want the same on the, on the bottom side here. Now I want to show you a new brush. This is a three quarter inch flat brush. It's actually synthetic, although it looks like natural bristle. It's really springy. It just snaps right back into position and it holds a great chisel edge. So we're going to load that brush up. I love being able to bring in new stuff. I'm just going to throw some red on there. Maybe just a, a touch of black, but not much. Something like that. Very little paint. And, oh, you can draw that brush right to a sharp chisel edge. And with that, let's go ahead and block in some of the mid-tones of this rose. There. And follow your outline. <laughs> Spent so much time putting it in, I hate to cover it all up. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of follow my sketch because otherwise it's very difficult to put the petals where they're supposed to be. It's a little bit, a little bit like a, like a building. When you're painting a building or when you're painting an animal or something like that, you gotta get the pieces in the right spot. <laughs> when we paint trees, oh, you can do whatever you want. Really, there's, it's very difficult to make a tree with the limbs in the wrong spot because they can grow just about anywhere. But on this rose, they're all very similar and they have, a, they have a certain structure we have to follow. And this is just the mid-tone. This is not the shadow and it's definitely not the highlight. I'm just blocking this in where I think, where I think we might need this mid-tone color. Next, I'll add a little bit of yellow to our red. And it gives us a beautiful, beautiful, more of an orange color. But not too orange, it just looks like a different shade of red. And I'm just gonna block in this area. I'm still working kind of with the mid-tones. Occasionally you can hit just a, a little bit of black and blend it in. Kind of gives you a nice shadow. All right, just follow your outline, brush it in, but be loose. I don't want you don't want to tighten up, even though there is an outline. It's not important that you follow it perfectly. It's more just to get the petals in the right spot. There. And it's very, very important here that you work from each flower. So you got to bounce around. Otherwise, you'll never get them to match. Now, even though we're not done blocking in the rows, we can take just a little bit of black load it up with a chiseled edge on the brush. We can drop in some subtle shadow areas. Maybe not so subtle. Actually, we want some beautiful, beautiful contrast areas. So you can kind of cut in like this and then feather it. You can always use your little soft hair blender. I may get that one out later. Kind of soften up some of these areas if you're having trouble making a, a transition between light and dark. You have the freedom to, to use whatever brush you need to. Now with our little soft hair blender brush, I want to hit a couple of these areas that look a little hard. 
there's a little spot of light right here. So I'm just gonna soften that <laughs> very lightly. Same over here, just soften it. Don't touch the edges. I love these crisp edges. Wipe the brush off. See this light area? We wanna blend that in a little. Some of those shadows. All right, and I don't know this little petal right here. Maybe we'll just sort of sweep over them. In these larger areas, try to go with the, the direction of the petal. Otherwise, here on the smaller ones, you kind of have to do little circles. Or it's just going to smear too far. <laughs> Don't want to get out of control. All right. Step back from your painting because it's so hard to see up close. Maybe this spot. And Don't get rid of all the hard edges. We do want some. They give it interest and a little extra contrast. Now I'll bring the three-quarter inch brush to a nice sharp chisel edge. And this is just red with a tiniest touch of yellow in it. I'm gonna block in some of the petals here. I think I'll start in the back. In flower painting, I'm not sure that it really matters too much where you start. Kind of just pick out the petals and, and throw them in. It's really not, it's not that hard. It's very different though, if you're not, if you're like me and you really are not much of a flower painter, don't be afraid because you can jump right in. And it's just, it's not, it's not too unlike landscape painting. I mean, you're just working with light and shadow. You have to worry about where the light's gonna hit it and where the light won't hit it, and that's what gives it form. Just like a tree or a waterfall or anything else. Let's see, maybe we wanna do just a, there, a little bit right in there with that color. Let me add some white and just a hair more yellow to that. Okay. And with that, let's, let's hit the top here. That's a petal that's sort of on the back, <laughs> on the back and leaning forward and over. There. Make sure you give yourself nice, beautiful, crisp, clean edges. And then when you highlight, you're going to want to use a a very bright color, even more than this. We're gonna wanna, we're gonna wanna hit it with some white. And I do, I do this. I'm just working back and forth between the mid-tones and then I occasionally will pop a highlight in just so I get a feel for where we're going. Now I'll load up the brush with a little bit of white and some red and touch of yellow. And maybe right in here, this area. I'm just gonna set the brush down and and drag it across here. This is creating that beautiful lip where the, the petal is physically flipped over. The little end is flipped over. There. And it kind of comes across and then joins up like that. Don't worry if it's a little rough because you can go back over it and smooth it in. There, just barely hit the outside. Sometimes all it takes is a little touch and a little swish with the brush. And it really just makes a, <laughs> a nice effect. There. Let's see, maybe we want to do that same effect right here. Grab it and pull it in. Nice. And maybe just an extra hit right there. And blend it in. You can work with your flowers for, for a very long time, creating all these beautiful little details, but you don't have to spend too long. Maybe there's some light back here. You can do it reasonably quickly. It's a lot of fun. You can be loose. There. You're not stuck to the highlight. <laughs> You're not stuck to your outline. You can go and make a, a new shape if you want to. Now back to our blender brush. We can do a little, little bit of softening just here and there. Some of these edges are a little clumpy. So we'll just sort of brush them very carefully. Now you see this area, maybe some in there. and I wanna throw that out of focus. So I'm just gonna brush over the edge like that. Sweep over it, maybe, maybe a little out of focus down here. 
And the reason I'm doing that, I know it's kind of odd, the reason I want to do that is because if the entire flower is in focus, it's almost competing for your attention. This way the edge, some of the edges are out of focus and you just look right there and toward the center. So that's why. Maybe I'll just sort of hit that one. But you don't want to overdo it either. That's about, that's about all we need. Maybe just a, a bit of blending to this edge. Just sort of pick out the areas that you feel are, are hard and go right over them. Next, I'll load up our three quarter inch brush with some yellow, a touch of green and white to brighten it all up. And let's just begin working on some leaves here. Start by giving yourself a little line. And I think maybe the most effective way is here to just start and pull toward the back. You do have to angle it, angle your strokes to, toward the back where it just doesn't work right. It's okay to have a nice Kind of a scalloped edge, that's good. And maybe these leaves are, oh, they're very bright. So you really want to paint them that way. We can add in the little details later. Okay. Touch of the, touch of the dark green. See, so you work that in. Very dry though, you don't want to get this paint wet because then you don't have as much freedom to, to make adjustments. I can go over this several times before it starts to, to get muddy. Now with dark on one side and a light green on the other side, let's go ahead and oh, we'll start right about here. And we're just going to pull down a little stem and then let it fade right off. We'll maybe blend that in later. We, we can just leave it like that actually. It looks pretty good. And then maybe right over here, a little, little dark. There's no light on it now and I can kind of make it slightly larger. There, the stems are not the focus of the painting. They're just there because they have to be. It would look a little strange having the flowers just floating. There, maybe over here. I have an idea. Let's do this. Let's make... There, let's make these little things that go under. I sort of left space open for them. This is where the, the flower attaches to the stem. It has this beautiful little structure that it's, it's hooked to the stem. I'm not an expert in flowers. I'm just getting started here floral painting, but it's a lot of fun. I hope you're enjoying it. I think we'll do, I think we'll do some more of it. Maybe even get some instructional material out for you. Shows a little more detail on how to paint these roses. Maybe one of those how-to DVDs. Let me know if you're interested in seeing the more flowers. We can also do buildings and a lot of other things with this brush. It opens up a lot of new possibilities. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out my website, my DVDs, and also my brush line. And thanks for watching.